Hey everyone, Bill Lowen here with Wired to Fish with one of my favorite techniques, and that's swim jig fishing. And look, let's face it, you can swim any jig out there in the industry that you wanted. You could swim a football head jig if you wanted, but I'm gonna show you all the little tips and all the little things you need for a swim jig. First and foremost, I feel like you always need a jig that has a bullet-shaped head. As you can see, this is a backstroke swim jig from Lure Parts Online, and it has that bullet-shaped head. Okay, what that's gonna allow that jig to do is come through the grass, come through the flooded bushes, come through the laydowns without getting hung up, okay? The other big thing that I think a swim jig needs to have is it needs to have what I call a chin on it or the belly that's like on your bass boat, okay? What that does is gives that jig the ability to rise in the water, okay? I hate a jig that I have to fight to keep up in the water column, okay? And if you got that chin and that lift, it gives that jig lift, makes it wanna come up, okay? So that's one of the key things you're gonna wanna look for when you're just selecting a uh, swim jig head style, okay? Big question I get is trailers. The sky is the limit when it comes to trailers. I always just try to match my trailers to the conditions, okay? The colder the water, the less action I want in my trailer. The warmer water, the more action I want. If there's a shad spawn or a brim spawn going on, I try to use some type of a swim bait trailer, something that's gonna match the hatch. When it comes to colors, if I'm on a big swim jig bite, I have three rods laying up there with three different colors. One that's white, one that's black and blue, and one that's something in green pumpkin. I don't care where you go in the country, what time of the year it is, one of those three colors is gonna work for you. You know, another big question that I get asked all the time is what rod and reel do I use? This is my signature series swim jig rod from Castaway, okay? I call it an 80-20 rod. 80% 80 backbone, 20% tip. Basically, it's a flipping stick frame with a spinnerbait tip on it, okay? And what that rod does, it gives you a few benefits that I think are very important, okay? One, it's gonna give you the ability to make those nice roll casts so you can skip way under docks, way under flooded bushes, make very accurate casts, and not be fighting the rod. The other benefit that this is gonna give to you, when I was growing up, when I learned how to swim jig fish, I swam my jig on a flipping rod, okay? And by the end of the day, I was wore out from shaking that rod. So with this rod, with that softer tip on it, all you gotta do, is get the rod tip. If you watch that rod tip, it's really shaking, but my hand's hardly moving at all, okay? Back in the day, you had to shake this rod really hard to get that to happen. So now by having that soft tip, all I gotta do is get the rod tip going, and the rod does all the work for you. The other big key to this setup is the reel. This is a Team Lose Light 7.5 to one gear ratio. You absolutely wanna use a high-speed reel. Because what typically happens is your strikes are so fast and so violent that those fish will get you out of position. And if you don't have a high speed reel, you're gonna have a really hard time keeping up with those fish. The other key is 30 pound braid. I typically always throw 30 pound braid. And you know what? I know a lot of guys like heavier braid, 40, 50, 65 pound braid. But I feel like that's a jump rope, okay? I feel like on 30 pound braid, that you're gonna get the maximum action out of this swim jig. It's actually gonna act like it's on traditional fishing line. So when you get out there on the water this spring, throw in a swim jig, try these techniques, and I know it's definitely gonna help you out.